Conformational isomers of propane and butane. Propane is a three carbon molecule, and if you look at this, you know carbon number one and the carbon number two here over here. The carbon number one is attached with the three hydrogen atoms. So these are the three hydrogen atoms of this carbon number one. This is our front carbon, carbon one, and I see this is the carbon two, and this carbon two it is attached with the uh, two uh, hydrogen atoms and one metal group, right? Let's say this is our metal group over here and this is the two these are the two hydrogen atoms now in this you know uh, conformation we find that hydrogen on this carbon and the methyl on this carbon they are under eclipsion right these are in one you know uh, line so these are under eclipsion right so these two groups are also eclipsed these two groups also eclipsed so this is what you call as an eclipsed conformational state right this is the eclipsing state of the propane. So if you do a rotation around this carbon-carbon single bond, you rotate one of the carbon atom here by 180 degree, then you will see this methyl group will be over here. And now here the groups are not under, under eclipsed, right? Rather, these are having a little bit more distance as compared to the eclipse state. So therefore, the groups have, will have a less repulsion. That's why the staggered is more stable than the eclipsed one. This is actually the sawhorse projection. And now we can also draw these two uh, conformational isomers of the propane in the Newman projection also, right? This is what you call as a Newman projection. So this is the Newman projection. Here this is an, uh, a staggered conformation, right? We have this one as a staggered conformation. And if you do a rotation in the bond, only just about by 60 degree angles, what do you get? You get an eclipsed conformation, right? You get an eclipsed conformation and if you do a further 60 degree rotation what would you get you know you are doing a further 60 degree rotation in the back carbon let's say you you know this hydrogen will shift here this will shift here and this will shift here so by a further 60 degree rotation this hydrogen will shift here right it will be now over here the back carbon will have a hydrogen over here this will move here so you have here a hydrogen and you got one more hydrogen here now this is again a staggered one, right? This is a staggered conformation. And for the 60 degree rotation, what do you get? You will get again an eclipse. So propane has two conformational isomers, eclipse and staggered. Staggered being more stable than eclipse. And that means in terms of energy level diagram, you know this is the energy of the different conformational isomers. The most stable one is the staggered one. So staggered is this one. Right, this is the staggered one, the lowest energy. Eclipsed has a higher energy uh, than the staggered by about 14.2 kilojoules per mole. Right, this is actually the the eclipse conformation. And you know, if you do a rotation by about 60 degree here, staggered by doing a rotation of 60 degree converts it into eclipse. Right, staggered by rotation of you know 60 degree gets into eclipse and if you do a further rotation 60 what you will get further rotation of 60 you will get again in a staggered right this is a staggered one correct and that means if you have a staggered conformation over here and you do a 120 degree rotation what will you get a 60 degree you know uh, rotation converts a staggered into eclipse but a 120 degree rotation in a staggered again produces the staggered right correct and an eclipsed confirmation eclipsed confirmation over here but doing a 120 degree rotation what will you get you will again get the eclipse correct so these are the two conformational isomers of the propane now what about the butane butane if you look at the carbon number one and the carbon number two here between the carbon number one and the carbon number two, you will have only two conformational isomers, right? Suppose this is our front carbon. This is the C1 here. This is the front carbon C1, and it has got three hydrogen atoms attached to it. And now the carbon number two has got two hydrogens, and it has got an ethyl group, right? This one is an ethyl group, CH2, CH3. So this one is C2H5. And what if you do a rotation by about a 60 degree angle? what you will get you will get a 
eclipse right so this hydrogen will be here and this will be here and this will be over here correct so you will get c2h5 under eclipsing with the hydrogen and this one will be the eclipse in here and if you do a further 60 degree rotation what you will get you know you will see that this hydrogen will shift over here and this one will shift over here this one will go back here so that means you get again back the first one which is a staggered conformation right so this is actually the staggered conformation and this is the eclipse if you do a further 60 degree rotation you will again get a staggered conformation so that means Looking uh, you know, at the bond between the carbon number 1 and the carbon number 2 in the butane, you only have two conformational isomers. But what if you look at the carbon number 2 and the carbon number 3, the conformational isomers around this bond over here, right? So there, let's see how many conformational isomers are possible there. Let's say this is our carbon number 2, this is the C2 here, right? And this C2 has got two hydrogen atoms over here. Let's say these are the two hydrogen atoms. And then it has got a one metal group also, the CH3. This one is a back carbon, this is C3 here. And this C3 has got two hydrogens and one metal group, right? Now this conformation is very stable because here it is an anti-conformation, right? This is called as an anti-conformation or you can see the staggered conformation because here, you know, the groups are very far away and this will be very stable. Right? This is what you call as an anti-conformation. And if you do a rotation in this anti-conformation by about 60 degree, what will you get? You'll see that this particular hydrogen, it will shift here, and this will shift here, and this metal group will shift here. Now you will have an eclipse, right? You will have an eclipse between the methyl group and the hydrogen. Here will be the eclipse between hydrogen and hydrogen. Here will be the eclipse between, uh, you will say that this is the CH3 and the hydrogen correct so this is an eclipse but this is called as a partial eclipse why because we have an eclipse between hydrogen and the methyl right this is what you call as a partial eclipse right correct and then if you do a further 60 degree rotation what you will get you will again get a confirmation that neither resembles with the eclipse nor with the anti right because you will have now this metal group it will shift here this hydrogen will shift here and this hydrogen will shift here Correct. So you have a back carbon with methyl and hydrogens. Now, you, know, you do a rotation by 60 degree angle. So CH3 will be here, hydrogen will be here, and hydrogen is here. Now see, it's not an eclipse. And it's not an anti. It's not just like an anti, right? Because here in the anti, you have the two methyl groups very far away, right? The angle there is 180 degree. Correct? These are in the opposite directions. So the repulsion will be less, very less. But here, the groups are not eclipsed, right? These are not eclipsed, but this is not again anti. However, these two groups are a little bit closer, so they will have a little bit more repulsion, correct? As compared to the staggered one, or you can say as, as compared to the anti conformation. So, this is what you call as a gauche, right? Gauche conformation, okay? And if you do a further 60 degree rotation here, a 60 degree further rotation means now this metal group will you know, eclipse with the methyl, hydrogen will eclipse with this one, and this one will eclipse here. So you will get an eclipse in between the two metal groups, the CH3 and the CH3 here, and here will be the hydrogen, hydrogen, here will be the hydrogen and the hydrogen. Now this is again an eclipse, but not a partial eclipse, because here you have a eclipse in between hydrogen and the metal group, hydrogen and the metal group. But right now you have an eclipse in between the two bulky groups, metal group. So that means this is, you know, what you call as a fully eclipse, right? This is a fully eclipse confirmation. All right. And then what if you do a further 60, do, 60 degree rotation here? Correct. What you will get means now this metal group will shift here and this hydrogen will shift here and this will be here. So again, now you will get a confirmation like this CH3 and the CH3 hydrogen, hydrogen here, hydrogen, hydrogen here. You can see this confirmation over here resembles with this one, right? The only difference is you have a metal here, and in this confirmation you have a metal here. But the steric repulsions will be, you know, almost the same here and here. So that means this one is again a gauche confirmation, right? This is a gauche confirmation. So if you further do a rotation of 60 degree, what you will get, you know, 60 degree further rotation, you will get a partial eclipse, correct? 
and further you know repulsion you know this uh, uh, rotation you will get anti so that means in the butane how many different conformations you see here one is anti partial eclipse gauche and the full eclipse and here in terms of stability which is the most stable anti conformation right this is the number one okay let's say you know let me number these this is the front one this is second this is three and this is the fourth one the four conformational isomers of the butane and which is the most stable one the most stable one will be the anti conformation is the most stable one so number one is the most stable one and the second one it will be the gauche right because here is the eclipsion here is the eclipsion but gauche there is literally lesser you know repulsion so second one is gauche okay and now here is the eclipsion between hydrogen metal hydrogen metal here you have a eclipsion between the two bulky groups so that means partial eclipsion is more stable than you know the full eclipse so that means so first here is one then it is the three one third gauche and then it is the second partial eclipsion and then it is the fourth this is the order of you know the stability so that means when there is a free rotation around the carbon carbon bond between the c2 and the c3 in the butane you get the four different conformational isomers right this is the anti conformation and this is the you know it's opposite one which is fully eclipsed correct and the most stable one is the anti conformation because here the groups are far away you can see when this bond is you know rotating this is uh, these are the different conformations but this one is the eclipsed and when this methyl group here moves to this this position this is anti conformation right and in between you will have different conformations you will have a eclipsion here with the hydrogen and the methyl group that is partial eclipsion and if you have a methyl here then that is a gauche conformation so due to the free rotation around the carbon carbon single bond we find there are four different conformational isomers present in the butane between c2 and the c3 bond but between c1 and c2 there are only two conformation that is what we have learned right fine so this is the energy level diagram of the different conformational isomers of the butane between the c2 and the c3 bond and as we discussed the most stable one is the anti conformation where the two methyl groups are very far away so this will be the most stable one let's say this is our first one the anti conformation and full eclipse this fourth one is having the highest energy so this will be the full eclipse this is the fourth conformation and when you do a you know a 60 degree rotation in the first one the anti conformation what do you get you get a partial eclipse right you get a partial eclipse so that means this is our partial eclipse this is the second conformational isomer and when you do a 60 degree rotation in the partial eclipse what do you get you get the gauche which is the third one so the, but the gauche is you know relatively more stable than the eclipse correct but it's not that means stable as you see here in the anti because here in the anti conformation the methyl groups are very far away and here are these two groups are a little bit closer so that's why this one is the third conformation here which is higher in energy into you know than the anti conformation and if you do a further 60 degree rotation then you get a eclipse and eclipse you get you do a further 60 degree rotation what do you get you get a gauche right so that means you again get the the third conformation you know here again this one back correct and if you do a further 60 degree rotation you know from here now this uh, methyl group will eclipse with the hydrogen so you get an eclipse conformation that is the second right so this way you can interconvert the different in, you know the uh, different conformational isomers so if you get a question let's suppose you have an eclipse conformation right this is a partial eclipse uh, a partial eclipse conformation and if you do a 120 degree rotation in the partial eclipse right you have here this one partial eclipse and you do a 120 20 degree uh rotation in this bond so what you will get so you will get 60 and 60 so this is 120 so by a 120 degree rotation you get a full eclipse conformation correct and if you do if you have a gauche conformation here you do a further 120 degree what do you get you again get the gauche conformation all right hope you got the concept thanks for watching the video bye for now